Facebook, where you have to choose dif between different genders, between different, you know, ja you and I have spoken a little bit about Jaren Lanier and his critique yeah. of that. There's a problem with the notion that we have to in some way identify. Yeah. We, we have to yeah. exclude. Okay. We can't have different ambivalent meanings in the same way. Yeah, but in, uh, okay, what interests me, if you ask me, in phenomena, not only Facebook, but generally this, let's call them staged identities, you know, like where you can invent a fake identity. I can be a straight man and I can construct my, my digital web persona, which is that of a promiscuous woman, of a gay person, whatever. The thing, it's obvious what I will say, the thing that interests me is how there can be more truth in the mask that you adopt than in your real inner self. I always believe in masks. I don't, if you tear, I never believed in emancipatory potential of this gesture, let's tear off the masks. Okay, let me so give you a keep, keep the persona. Yeah, but why? Let me give you a simple example. Let us say that I am in reality a shy, impotent, stupid person, afraid, but then in internet interaction, I adopt a screen persona of a brutal rapist guy who humiliates people, beats women, and so on. It's too easy to say, oh, I'm really a coward, but there I imagine to be a powerful macho. What if it's the opposite? What if I really am that, a brutal guy, but in real life, because of social pressure and so on, I oppress it, so that the true mask is my authentic, real self. And truth, the truth comes out precisely in the guise of a fiction, which is why I like very much old-fashioned novels like Is It Mansfield Park or which Jane Austen, you know, this classical topos that there are a group of people, some of their lovers, who are too shy to act upon their love, but then, for example, if they're upper class, they decide to stage a play, and as if by a miracle, the roles that, are, that they play there allows them to say on stage to the person they love that in real love they cannot say, and so on and so I mean, on. Th this is a very Nietzschean move of you, no? The notion that our truth is really the mask we put on. Yeah, although, okay, that's another topic, my problems with Nietzsche and so on, you know. But yes, I, I, I believe in this, I believe here in alienation. I'm in alienation in the sense of, again, you need an external point of identification. The truth is out there, but not because we have to avoid our true inner self. Our true inner self is full of shit. It's misery, whatever. I never believed in, you know, getting deep into a person. If I go deep into anyone, I discover shit. We are all filthy, egotists, whatever. It doesn't interest me. I, so I, how, so uh, approaching them in what way then to get to them? Uh, again, what fascinates... I mean, is that, is that the wrong way of approaching? Yeah, because, you know, when you say approaching, you presuppose that people themselves are what they are. I don't think people are persons in the sense of they have some... So inner you're truth. answering the other question about yeah. the person. In a way, yes, that people are not persons in the sense that there is some inner truth, their dreams, whatever, that makes the real core of a person. And I will give you an ultimate answer, which I hope will convince you now. I mean in an absolutely sincere way for a moment, if you can. Forget my tasteless jokes. You know Jonathan Little's Le Bien Veillant, yeah. the novel? Uh, I think what he did there is precisely, in a way, making the point that, I like, that you know, uh, when you, what always bothers me is this disgusting, again, wisdom, ah, like, I'm ready to shoot people who claim there was a so-called multicultural wisdom which says an enemy is a person whose inner story we don't know. The idea is clear. 
We hate someone, but if we were to know his universe from within, we would have seen he also has his side of the story, his experience to tell. Maybe, maybe, but the truth of this is extremely limited, I think. Because what I always fascinated me is how, if you take even the greatest criminals, Hitler, Stalin, whatever, murderers, I'm quite sure that each of them will be able to tell you a very authentic inner story and so on. I think that our inner truth, when you really open up yourself, you know, this pathetic moment, this is what I am, these are my dreams, my deepest fears, desires, then you really lie. In the case of Nazis and so on, you have this deep inner story to avoid confronting the horror of what you are doing. I, don't, I think if some Nazi executioner will start to tell you about his inner experience, I would say, I'm not, your truth is outside. Your truth is, truth is what you did there in the camp. I'm not interested in your inner story. Besides, this is the basic Lacanian notion of fantasy as a constitutive lie. I want Our inner truth is the lie we construct to be able to live with the misery of our actual lives.